Global leadership is currently in the spotlight at the United Nations General Assembly. How do South Africa's leaders, though, compare? And are we prepping our young leaders to be competitive on the world stage? Well, our guests this evening are Tasnim Mutara from the uh, National Council of Provinces, I mean, sorry, from the African uh, National Congress, as well as the IFP is Mkuleko. Sengwa uh, Gwenwenya from the Democratic Alliance is in our Cape Town studios. We also have Lukwana Mguni, who is a political analyst, joining us from our Durban studios. Good evening to uh, all of you, and thank you very much uh, for your time. And let's get uh, straight to it, Tas. Nimi Fama, start with you. Do young people really, and I mean really, have a say within South Africa's political parties? Yes, thanks for you. I think South African, young South Africans do have a say. Um, you can look at history, past a uh, very, very recent history, where you had the agitation of students at um, higher institutions of learning, the fees must fall. It was led by young people, a struggle that across the spectrum young people face. And they were the struggle to they took to the streets. Kind of almost outside of their political homes. They had to take it to government, to the state, who are the ones who had the, the necessary um, sovereignty to be able to change and change that to act on the concerns that they were. So definitely young people are agents for change. And I think in South Africa, there's definitely becoming, um, it's becoming more recognized the space is there for young people to take up um, issues that we face currently ourselves. Mkulego, do uh, young people have a say, and I mean within their political parties, because let's face it, as things stand now in South Africa, political parties still very much um, rule. No, um, we, I think that a lot more work still needs to be done, but I think over the past few years, young South Africans have been able to age themselves into the political space, and they have found their voice and they found their agency. Um, and they found their conviction and that participation is necessary and required for us to build this country. I mean, just in the IFP, for example, we've put up the Youth Councillors Forum, which is a structure of all the youth councillors that the party has, and it is designed to actually ensure that wherever IFP is represented, the youth voice in matters of governance um, is actually heard. We've built up the Internal Leadership Development Institute within the party as well, um, which is geared towards leadership training of young people working with our students wing because we recognize the need um, for young people to actually be present. And of course, um, we've set thresholds even in the, in the party that all deployments of any council moving forward and parliament and legislature, the minimum um, of young people that we'll have is 40%. We took this resolution um, in, 20, in 2011 um, and is now has been set into motion from 2016 moving forward. So those are all interventions to make sure that um, young people uh, do not have to take politics out of political parties, as you say, with fees must fall, it's to create space within um, parties. And I think that it's very important that we continue building up those capacities. Gwen Gwenya, what is uh, your experience uh, within the Democratic Alliance? What I would say is, firstly, I want to make two points. Um, the first being around youth inclusion. I mean, I think what any party should strive to do is to make sure that competent people are well represented. Now, no competent person must be denied representation on the basis of their age. So that would be arbitrary. But equally, what would be arbitrary is to include people solely on the basis of their age. Because once we start saying that, you know, a political party should have X amount of youth representation, then it begs the question, well, shouldn't they have X amount of rural representation, X amount of urban representation, X amount of gender representation, X amount of disabled representation? I mean, you can see the, the logical end game here is quite ridiculous. So I think that the focus should be around competence. And if somebody is competent, then their age shouldn't matter. Um, so if, even if they're young, but they can do the job, then they must obviously be included. But the focus remains around competence. The second point is to say around um, representativity. It's also misguided to think that if you are young, you necessarily are representing young people. I don't see my role as being a representative for young South Africans. I'm just a, a person trying to ensure that the right and credible solutions are put forward. The fact that I'm young is a mere coincidence, um, but you know, young people or anyone should be 
trying to ensure that they have competent people to represent them, but also competent people to lead them. And I think there's a difference between representation and leadership. Often leaders have to take difficult decisions and perhaps actually act against what the majority might want. But if you see a young person as merely a representative of young people, it means that whatever young people want, there must be a voice for those young people. They must merely be a mirror reflecting what the, the young populace wants. That's not how I see my role. My role is to lead. And in some cases, that means actually going against the grain, convincing a particular co cohort that this is not the right course of action. And I think far too often in South Africa, young leaders see themselves as young representatives as opposed to leaders, and I think there's a crucial difference there. Well, Gwen, you didn't see them, but Tasnim and Mkulego are shaking their heads here in the studio. But I'm going to go to uh, Deb and first to Lukwana Mgoni. As someone, Lukwana, who is outside looking in, what do you see? Well, Vuyo, what I see is that young people, well, also we have to probably define it and contain it within the mm -hmm. ages of 35 and 18 or, or 16 or somewhere there, and say these young people we are talking about, for me, they experience what I call politics of co-optation. They get co-opted into a system whose rules they did not create, and whose standards they then have to fight very hard. If I'm listening to Mkulego, uh, they fight for constitutional amendments because generally these things did not have quotas that envisage full and broad participation of young people. But also, Vuyo, I mean, uh, if you peruse just the three political parties that are there with you uh, in this discussion, you also find that uh, in the ANC, for example, if you look at the history of the ANC, the founding fathers, as some of them are called, a number of them were fairly young, uh, highly influential people, but the organization morphed into a point where post-1950s, it started chucking out young people into the closer circles of power or being in power. Then the reason why that happens for you is that those people who bring about change, times of political change, tend to be very young. But because their longevity in life sustains them, they don't see themselves without those politically prominent roles. For example, today we ask the question of, of the EFF leader as to how long is he going to remain the CIC of the EFF? Is it post this term or does he see himself at 15 years from now still leading the EFF? These are important questions because people who are young and lead young in politics tend to find it very hard to part and leave space for other young people to, to get in there and create change. And the importance of young people People for you. Uh, to touch, for example, on your last speaker, Gwen uh, Nguenya, uh, there is an importance about politics of representation, uh, politics of making sure that people participate, they are included. Yes, of course, they are there to act as leaders and lead, but the mere fact that you may just end up with competence uh, favoring, because remember, for competence, you need criteria, and at times it depends who crafts the criteria to close out or to to bring inside certain individuals. So I don't think that uh, discussing issues of quotas, discussing issues uh, of broad and, and participation and inclusion is necessarily wrong in itself because it is for this reason that young people by far and large have been marginalized, especially those that disagree with mainstream views of senior leaders within political parties uh, in South Africa. A number of those young people have okay. been thrown into the margins of their parties, if not out of their parties. Now, uh, uh, Tasneem, I mean, perhaps you can, I mean, to uh, young people who are, or who may be outside um, of political parties, who, when looking at people like you, don't quite see uh, the achievements, you know, or the positives that perhaps someone from within um, is able to see. What do you point to as evidence of uh, the successes you're saying you young people within the ANC, in, this, in your case, are able to secure? Okay. Um, firstly, let me say that the ANC also has introduced a quota system, which wasn't there in 1994. And probably the reasons for that are simply that the ANC prior 1994 didn't prepare itself as a party to govern. 
and it has had to um, adjust and morph itself into what is relevant today. So we also have introduced a quota system. For instance, 50-50% uh, of women representation was introduced constitutionally in the ANC, but it's also, um, it's also now transferred to the representative structures of, of, of ANC, whether it's in council, legislature, parliament. And that's the reason I would imagine you differ with Gwen. Definitely, because you have to have, um, I don't think somebody who's 50 would, would agree that at, at the same, with the same qualifications as somebody who's 24 and 50, that they are equally competent. I don't think so. So representation is very important because the people that you represent must be able to look at you as a mirror of what they are experiencing and have confidence and trust in you that you will raise their issues on their behalf because you experience them the same. So if I'm competent, it means that I look at things from an external point of view. I'm now going to convince you that what you experience, what you want, how you want to address your own issue is wrong because I'm not experiencing it the same. Um, Kulego, I mean, uh, Lukwana makes a, a, a compelling point about how young people tend to get co-opted um, to structures and uh, have to abide by rules that they never created in the first place. Well, the reality is that politics is fluid, so there will be a starting point, and the starting point is the structuring of those rules. As politics evolves, the need to change those rules is there and it exists, and that's why all constitutions make a provision for amendment. It is at that point where then young people must be able to restructure their organization so that it suits the conditions of the time in preparation for the future. So whether we crafted the rules or not is immaterial, but it's how you actually effect the change of those rules. But the fundamental point that I want to raise for you in so far as youth representation is concerned and in response to Gwen, is that maybe she was fortunate enough to arrive in parliament in the fifth parliament. I arrived there in the fourth parliament. I was 24 at the time. And I can tell you that the politics of ageism was very rife. You're not seen as an equal, not seen as an, a colleague. You are seen as that little boy. And you have to be able to find your space and find your footing. So if you do not break down the barriers of ageism in politics, you make it difficult for decisions to be made along the lines of what is real and possible. And you close down the space um, for young people. And the challenge I would put to Gwen, if she challenges this is to say, well, then we should see the DA do away with the DA youth, do away with the DA women's network and does so, and just have a DA. If you do not create spaces for groups, um, for sectors, you make it very difficult to influence the discourse because you all look at the politics through one lens. But if you create the vantage points of all the um, different formations in a political party, youth, women, students, and so on, you create a better environment which enables you to be stronger in what you articulate. So it is important. And of course, it does not disqualify competence. Nobody is saying that be there for the sake of being there. It is qualified, but young people need to be represented. Given the fact that we are the, you know, the biggest political, uh, I mean, population grouping in the country, it cannot be. I mean, even now, the fact that parliament of 400 people has got less than 30 people under the age of 35 is the biggest indictment. And so those are the things that need to change. Gwen, well, you've heard uh, what the other panelists have said about you, but I'll leave it uh, to you to actually respond directly uh, to them. But here's something I'd like, uh, I want to ask. When you look at uh, someone like Macron, who is the president um, uh, of France, a big country, uh, for example, 40 years old, what goes through your mind? Well, what goes through my mind is that competence is not necessarily related to age. And that's exactly what my point is, is that the focus should be on competence. And to the extent that some organizations might want to prevent competent people arbitrarily on the basis of their age, they should not be able to do that. Um, but at the same time, I don't buy into this conversation or narrative around demographic representativity that we need to hear women's voices because women will represent women and that we need to hear young people's voices because young people represent young people. That's not true. I'm often in committees or in situations, scenarios where um, my opinion might accord with that of an older white male. 
and another scenario where my opinion might accord with um, a young person who's my age, but that's just merely coincidental. Um, the issue is that you have competent people who are able to engage in their specific area of expertise, or perhaps are also able to engage in a wide set of areas. But it's not true that if you have, let's say you have a committee that doesn't have a young person on it, that there is no one in that room who's capable of articulating young, young people's issues. So you can have an expert economist who has studied the phenomena of youth unemployment extensively and is an expert expert in being able to recommend solutions to tackle youth unemployment without them being young themselves. So I reject this idea that one has to belong to a particular demographic group in order to represent them. A man can represent a woman's interests, a young person can represent older people's interests, and vice versa. So I, I, I think that's really the, the, the point of departure where perhaps our ideas um, differ is that I don't think that you need to have people of the same demographic group as yourself in order to feel represented. And I think that's an important concept to, to, to recognize and perhaps to accept if we are truly going to move forward as a society that doesn't um, basically retreat back into our um, ageist or sexual or racial lagers and think that only people who look and speak and come from the same place as us can represent us. I think it's a dangerous idea when we start thinking that only young people can represent young South Africans. Uh, Mgoni, we've seen, I mean, looking back at our experience of the past uh, 24 hours, it's uh, impossible at this stage to have, for example, a president coming uh, through the ranks of a political party, given um, the rules you say um, young people have to, you know, play by within political parties. Is it time, do you believe, that perhaps we should look out at a new or perhaps changing our political system so that it makes it possible for young people to come outside of political parties if the young people within uh, uh, political parties can't actually do that themselves from within. Well, Vuyo, before you change the system, you've got to change the values that govern those who are in power today, the elites of our society politically. And you've got to reorient their own social engineering imaginations and how they find themselves dispensable or indispensable insofar as they play a role within our politics. You can change the system, Vuyo, but if there are people who are going to relentlessly manipulate and work against it, it will continue to frustrate exactly what you say or suggest we should be trying to achieve. Young people in this country have but, not but always you will have been taken in control. You will have taken control away from the elders, so to speak. So they too will then be forced to play or abide by the new rules, which won't necessarily be of their own making, and, uh, and they will not have control over them. Isn't that uh, something to look into? I mean, honestly, honestly, for you, unless you are going to put an age limit and say there shall be no president over 50, any political system is open to political machination, which means patronage networks with changing systems, they also change. You go to any, even when we talk about constituency-based representation in this country, you go where we already have it, in local municipalities, where we directly elect our councillors uh, as communities, but you check the heavy influence of political parties in exactly that different electoral hybrid system that we already enjoy at the local level. So manipulation of process, Vuyo, is also about the mindset of those that must imagine the country without them and believe that they've played a role. So this conversation can't only be about what is it that young people are doing to try and fight for this change, which I really think they should fight for this change. And I think part of the problem, in actual fact, um, Kulego put it as an interesting challenge to Gwen in terms of networks and all of that. I actually think that leagues, for me, are actually now irrelevant and they are part and parcel of the problem because a person under the age of 35, I can bet you 
today, my last dollar voyo in the ANC, a person under 35 would not be the Secretary General. Why? Because they have not graduated through the ranks of the organization, which is the Youth League, and they have not reached the end game age there, which is 35. So the point I'm making, Vuyo, is we need two conversations. What is the country that we want to create? And what is the role of those that have led in trying to give way? I mean, um, Kulego's president, uh, you know, has been going for some time uh, at the helm. But relentlessly, the organization or himself keeps inviting him back to lead. That is not imagining the party without that kind of a leader who's the founding leader from the 1970s. So the two-way conversation, you are right, we need a bit of political reform, but the old people must allow themselves not to manipulate okay. for their own end games. Because, by the way, Vuyo, lastly, the old people themselves feel there is a backlog because they've been waiting their turn because of the logic of politics of patronage. So we need to embed, disembed in our politics some of these logics. Okay, guys, we've run out of time, but I want to give you 10 seconds each to say if there was one thing you could get today that could change the way things are for the better in the current political system, taking into account our need to have young people taking charge, what would that be? 10 seconds. For me, um, we have a system in South Africa. It's a party political system and young people who want to participate in mainstream politics, there are avenues and there are places for them to do it. And I think it's upon ourselves to rise up, use the avenues that we have, the rules that are there, and let's play by the rules and find our space. It can be done. Oh, well, we need a stronger system of provinces in this country and even more so we need to strengthen municipalities because all politics and development is local and that's where you find people. So the federal outlook that the IFP has is probably what is best and will have the best interest of the people at heart. On the point Lukonda makes about Prince Butel is you must have that discussion, but I think his point of departure is very wrong. The Prince leads at the behest of the IFP structures and not at his own accord. And so I would imagine that we must talk about it with Lukonda because he will leave the wrong narrative and we've explained this ad nauseum. If he hasn't heard it now, I worry. Okay, quick. Uh, Gwen? Well, the most important thing I would say is that to make sure that young people in South Africa are less focused on identity politics and parochial local issues and actually start thinking about the kinds of things that are going to make them globally competitive. Um, and I'm sorry, unless we're globally competitive and South Africa starts to become a country that can compete with the best of the best, then most other conversations are quite frankly irrelevant. Okay, and that's where we're going to leave it. Thanks to all four of you for your time this evening. Coming up next, we look at young leadership uh, from South African business. That's up next. <laughs>